Welcome to Tech Web Dots. Today, I am going to discuss what is Entity Framework and what are the difference in each version of Entity Framework and nowadays why we should use Entity Framework or you can say what is the business case where we should use Entity Framework. So, and this video is for beginners. So, let's get started without wasting time. Now, what is Entity Framework? It is a framework offering mapping of entities to relationship. Entities means here we are referring tables. Okay. So the overarching goal of entity framework is to allow you to interact with data from relational database using an object model that maps directly to the business object or you can say the domain object in your application. It means we are creating the model classes that will be directly mapped with the database. Okay, for example, rather than treating a batch of data as a collection of rows and columns, you can operate on collection of strongly typed objects termed entities. Okay, don't worry if it is not clear at this moment in the upcoming videos, we will discuss every concept with very easy example in a practical session. Okay, so these entities are also natively link you aware. It, it means you can write link you queries and that will be converted to the SQL queries at runtime and you can query against them using the same link you grammar that you already know. So I'm considering, you know, uh, you have the knowledge of link you. Okay. The entity framework runtime engine translate your link you queries into proper SQL queries on your behalf. You can create types that map through database tables, create database queries using link you create and update objects and write them to the database means you are creating uh, all the classes uh, by using C sharp code and all the operation that you want to perform that can directly applied on the database with the help of these model classes and entity framework. Okay. So this is the basic information of entity framework. Let's move ahead how it, it evolves over the time. So, if you talk about Entity Framework 1, that initially uh, it was placed with .NET 3.5 with Service Pack 1 and at that time uh, it was available with Link to SQL as well, we can use Link -U. and Entity Framework was uh, provider based and uh, offered access to several diff different relational database. When I say uh, several different relational database based on Providers means we can use SQL, we can use MySQL, and we can use Oracle as well. Okay, so mapping the objects to relations was done using EDMX file. Okay, so EDMX file is an important one that contains XML file, and the XML file contained is defined by three schemas. One is conceptual schema definition language that defines the object type with their properties and associations means we specify the property, what property with map to with what column and storage schema definition defines the database table, column and relations. We can apply different type of attributes as well on them and mapping schema language defines how the uh, conceptual schema definition and storage schema definition map to each other. So this is a very important point and at that time in uh, if I talk about the dot 3.5 service pack one, it was necessary to drive from the base class, which is entity object. So that was the initial requirement at the time of when entity framework begins the journey. Okay. So now if I talk about the after entity framework one, there is a huge improvement. There are many heavy changes. So directly we came to entity framework four. Uh, I mentioned here do, uh, dot star why because there are many versions so I will not uh, going to discuss each and every one but majorly 4 plus version if I say 4.0 and that was placed with uh, .NET uh, 4 framework entity framework 4.0 version so with this addition we have lazy loading was added to fetch the relations on accessing a property Creating database was possible after designing a model using SQL data definition language. And possibly the most important feature added was the support for POCO classes. POCO classes was very helpful for managing the whole mapping between model classes and the databases. Okay. 
So now if I talk about the uh, entity framework 4.1 and 4.2 that came after the um, 4.0. So there are many additional features added like NuGet packages was there. It means if you are using Visual Studio and you want to upgrade your entity framework. So with the help of NuGet packages, you can install them and use them accordingly. And it also offers a code first model where edmx file is to define the mapping is no longer used means you can also write your own mappings without edmx file okay so instead all the mapping is defined using c sharp code either using attributes or with a fluent api to define the mapping using code so these are the uh, few changes with uh, entity framework version 4.1 and 4.2 so if we came to entity framework 4.3 so the major thing which was added is added support for migrations and with this it is possible to define updates the database schema using c-sharp code because uh, what happened with migration if we are using that first we have to enable and we have to manage the classes file in that we maintain what uh, changes we are doing on our uh, db schema and we can roll back them we can apply them and perform many operations so the database update can be automatically applied from the application using the database so that kind of uh, few enhancement was there in the 4.0 versions so if we move ahead uh, we have entity framework 5 and 6 and in entity framework 5 majorly we have NuGet packages for entity framework 5 supported both .NET 4.5 and .NET 4 application and new with this release what performance improvement was there and as well as supporting new SQL Server feature such as spatial data types. So that kind of support added in Entity Framework 5 and if we talk about the Entity Framework 6 uh, that solves many uh, issues with Entity Framework 5 which was partly a part of the framework installed on the system and partly available via NuGet extension. But now the complete code of entity framework has moved to NuGet packages. It means there is no problem of partly install the um, uh, packages and somewhere it is not uh, correctly mapped. So that problem got resolved with the entity framework 6. And for not creating conflict, a new namespace was used in entity framework 6. So all those versions was there, all those features was already supported and it framework 6 and with better performance. Okay, so now we know the history of entity framework and up to the version 6 uh, at this point of time when I am making this uh, stuff. Now if I want to talk about what was the need of uh, rewriting of entity framework and the name came is entity framework core. So the major reason was entity framework core uh, because as of now we can uh, I can I can tell you the current version is a uh, .NET uh, core uh, 5.0 and when it when the 1.0 was released it was initially called entity framework 7 but uh, the naming convention if we strictly follow which has given by Microsoft it is uh, entity framework core 1.0 but the current version is 5.0 okay so this version is completely rewrite and remove old behaviors if i talk about the initial versions because further on like 1.0 to 3.0 5.0 so there are many improvements that's why we have the new version but i am i will discuss the major things like the complete rewrite and remove old behavior and this version I mean this version I mean I am referring to the .NET Core version no longer support the XML file mapping like uh, CSDL and SSDL and MSL and only code first approach is supported now the model that was added with entity framework 4.1 okay so the moment I said code first is supported it doesn't mean that database cannot be exist first you can either create the database first or define the database purely from code so both op um, both options are possible to support relational and no sql database as well so uh, keep in mind this is a very important point so for the relational database and no uh, sql database as well you just need a provider and you can use entity framework code and the very very important uh, point is the new version of NDL framework is based on .NET Core. Thus, it is possible to use this framework on Linux and Mac 
system as well so this is the advantage of using dotnet uh, net code and that's the main reason of rewriting of that okay so the final uh, remark on this uh, is there are many validations to stay with entity framework 6 but using asp.net core like a uh, version 1.025.0 on non windows platform using entity framework with a universal wind, uh, windows platform and using non relational data source all requires the use of entity framework core so i hope uh, these comparison will definitely help you to understand which one uh, you need to choose if there is a, a need of uh, cross platform uh, support then you can choose the dotnet core and if you want to stick on the windows and you want to uh, work with the latest version of entity framework then you can go with the entity framework 6 one okay so i hope you like the video thanks for watching so if you have any question please leave a comment in the comment box i will try to respond on that as soon as possible and in the next session we will discuss asp.net core entity framework code first approach thanks for watching have a good day bye bye and don't forget to subscribe like and share with your friends bye bye